wearing red lipstick in the last video. It's been kind of my thing recently, but I'm not exactly sure what order the videos I have filmed are going to be uploaded. So like, it might look like I have the same makeup on every day because this past like two weeks I've been like, it's raining, you know, it would be really fine to look like a clown. So let's put on a lot of like too much blush and bright red lipstick. That'll be super cute. Everybody loves that Ronald McDonald look. <laughs> so um, we're here. We're in the Quirky Trenches. I'm already miserable. So is Gimli. Thank you for your support. I guess let's start talking about um, useful information so that you stay in this video. And it's not just a video of me complaining because nobody wants to see a depressed author on the screen. So, um, useful information where to find agents to query like i have i have a list of over a hundred i think it's 118 um right now no it's 116. my list before i started querying was 118 agents you might be able to deduce from that why it's no longer 118 but we'll get there um so 118 agents, which is quite a few, and I am hoping and praying I don't have to query all of them. We might just have Gimli for the rest of the video in my arms. We'll see. So 118 agents. I honestly hope I don't have to query all of them. Um, they are all agents I would in theory like to work with. There are some I'd prefer to work with than others, ones who have better sales records, etc. Because obviously not all the agents are equal. There are better agents than others. Are you going to be good? There are one or two agents that unfortunately when I was looking up their sales history made me want them more. This is uh, an unfortunate side effect I think of finding an agent list and like compiling it is that when you are compiling an agent list you have to do your research. There are plenty of videos out there on this and if there is any interest for me to discuss like in depth and detail where to go to s research agents i will make a whole separate video on that i will tell you the websites i used primarily to find agents to research were query tracker um which is also obviously where i'm tracking which queries i have out and what agents have you know rejected me or whatever it's i think pretty much what m most authors i have come across on the internet also have used or use query tracker um it's great it's free you can become a premium member um i truly considered it but i'm at a point where um, i'm becoming neurotic um and query tracker premium has a lot more data options and I cannot spend any more of my time trying to like dig into the data that Query Tracker has for like has on agents because um, they have a certain amount for free um, or reading the comments other people make on agents profiles on Query Tracker. Um, I cannot spend any more of my free time on this website, so I'm not paying for it only for that reason. I actually think it's quite a reasonable price at a. Uh, $25 a year um, for quite a few really nice features if you think you're the kind of person who would not drive themselves crazy with the amount of data available. I would suggest, because I thought I would not be one of these people, query a couple agents first, wait a few days, and see how you're doing before you make that decision because sometimes the neuroticism just jumps out of you, especially when you are pursuing something with a lot of rejection, but it has been your lifelong dream. You'd be surprised how stir crazy and mad you start to get as you wait for responses to come back. So anyway, I query tracker and manuscript wish list and mswl.com. They're like two sides of the same coin. They're owned by the same 
they're run by the same whatever company or whatever but one's more official I guess than others and the other one like lets you search the hashtag on Twitter MSWL so it's a good way to like you can type in MSWL like comps for your title tone like tone and theme for your title um people who manuscript wishlist LGBT diversity different kinds of setting um comps etc etc you can type all of those things in that fit your manuscript to find agents who might be looking for what your manuscript has to offer and if they're looking for say a heroine with a disability and i find that on manuscript wish list and that agent represents young adult fantasy i'm going to query that agent <laughs> because my heroine has a disability in a young adult fantasy novel so my chances of that person picking up my book and requesting at least a full are that much higher. So those are the two websites I primarily used. I also literally just googled the agent of popular YA authors like Sarah J Maas, Cassandra Clare, uh, Susan Dunnard. I just googled Susan Dunnard agent or Sarah J Maas agent or I'm completely blanking on YA titles right now, but you get the idea, just, you might not even have to, like, maybe you don't own books in your genre for whatever reason, and you will borrow them from the library or something, or from friends, or you read them on your Kindle, I, I don't know. You don't have enough books in your genre at your house, just go to the bookstore, go to the section of your genre for me, young adult fantasy. Just, What's on over to the young adult fantasy sci-fi section and just start opening it up to the acknowledgements and any author who likes their agent, which is an agent you might want to sign with, will acknowledge their agent and the acknowledgements. And if they don't, either the agent is someone you don't want to work with or the author is a jerk. More than likely, if an author is not thanking their agent, it's not an agent you want to work with. After that, and after you've looked on these websites, Time to do some research. Most of the agents who are worthwhile uh, will list their previous clients on their website. Also, Query Tracker has like a tab of their previous clients. This is helpful because it shows you, hey, they've worked with Maggie Stiebotter. She sold well. They probably have some good connections or they worked with Suzanne Collins or Rick Riordan or insert big name in the genre you're trying to publish here. If they worked with big names, that's a good sign that they have fairly good connections. But you can also look at things like Publisher Weekly and Publisher Marketplace. Publisher Marketplace costs money that I do not pay for, but if you want to, you can look there. I also look on Publisher Weekly, which is free to see what deals are coming through and they will typically say what genre it is and they will list what agent as well. I think Publishers Marketplace probably has a better listing of those types of sales, but I'm poor. <laughs> so another option is always to look at, think, okay, 2019, 2018, like what were the big sales, the big hypes, like, recent authors who sold really well. Their agents probably know how to market your book and have good connections. At a publisher, at a big publisher with enough money, you know what I mean? That is my theory. I don't know if there's any, if that makes sense whatsoever, but to me if they can sell big names or sell a book that gets a lot of hype, then they know how to sell to a publisher that will appreciate your work. That's how it works in my mind. I have no idea if that's a good way to view it, but in general, an agent is a pretty decent agent if they've sold a couple of books in the past few years, big or not, because that kind of thing does come down to publisher preference and timing and trends, and it might not be the agent's fault at all. But if an agent has sold like one book to a super small imprint or an imprint that 
you don't need an agent to submit to. It's not the kind of agent you want to be querying because if you could, if they're going to just submit your book to publishing houses that you could submit to yourself, just submit to them yourself because then you don't have to pay your agent commission. But an agent is worthwhile in almost every other case because they can get you into Big Five and other larger imprints. Yeah, I can go more in depth on how I personally weeded out like schmagents or just bottom of the barrel agents, agents that might be not a schmagent, just not very good at their job because they're out there. Um, there are a couple that I just, I knew right away, like I've seen their track record or there are some things that you can see go on behind the scenes and just there's nothing on my do not query list just because I'm not looking to get an agent who can only sell my book to publishers that you don't need an agent to submit to. If I exhaust all of my actual like real agents, I, like I query all 118 of the agents that I think are worthwhile and nobody picks up my book then I'm going to just shelf it. I'm not going to keep trying to query it to agents who will never get it somewhere worthwhile or send it to a publisher that I doesn't need, that I don't need an agent to submit to because it means that my book is not ready or there's I'm not ready in my career or there's something going on there and I'm not going to keep trying to beat a dead horse. I'm saying this because there are authors out there <clears throat> I'm not going to name names, who clung way too hard to a novel or a book that just was never really worth that while, all that much and they should have shelved years and years ago and they couldn't find an agent with it and that the agent that they ended up signing with sold their book to a really small imprint that didn't need an agent to submit it to and it's just... I don't know, sometimes you have to learn when to let go. Obviously I'm hoping that this isn't that book, but I'm just saying it out there now. Like, sometimes it's better to let go than ruin your chances of being a traditionally published author with good sales. Like, being a well-respected traditionally published author by letting your debut flop, by picking a bottom of the barrel agent and going to a bottom of the barrel publisher. So on to my personal query status. It's miserable. A couple days ago I sent out six queries because you should query in rounds because if you get six rejections it tells you that your query itself needs a lot of work. If you get two rejections and four requests for fulls or partials um, and then you get passed like and then the agent passes on you your pages are the problem so that's why you query in batches if you didn't know it's to gauge if an agent passes perhaps why or where the problem is coming from um, is your query not like engaging enough or is there something wrong in your pages if you get a bunch of queries and a bunch of requests for fulls and a bunch of people pass also it might not be an issue with the pages that you can fix but timing and that can be tricky but if you get if you're getting requests for fulls then you know your query is not the problem and that's a nice first step um so i sent out six um, three days ago and I heard back from two of the agents in less than 24 hours obviously well maybe not obviously but both of them were rejections form rejections which I expected you can't expect the first agents you query for the first thing you hear back is to be a request for a full or a partial um, it still stung to be honest it was nice in a sense to get a rejection back within 24 hours than to not be like waiting on pins and needles or whatever but it also kind of hurts to know that you weren't even considered because like obviously if you're hearing back in five or six hours like they saw it they read it and they immediately passed 
but such is life and I guess in the end it's a better thing than a it's a good thing rather than a bad thing I still have four out there in the world with no answer so we'll see um, sometime next week I'm hoping to get at least one more answer back and then I'll send out as many as I've gotten back next week so that I will have another six out if that makes sense so if I don't hear back um, by the end of next week I will send out two more to two more agents hopefully I, I'm planning on sending them to quick responding agents to I'm trying to reach that number like six of responses to gauge like what percentage of rejections and requests I'm getting because if I'm getting a really low number of requests, even if I get one out of six, that's super low and it tells me that my query is probably not quite right. I'm aiming for a 40% request rate, which is the number I've heard floating around is like that you sh a good query should get you. Um, so yeah, we've been rejected twice. Um, it stung, but I'm past it now. It's been a couple of days. Um, and I've only gotten the two on the first day. It's not really um, necessarily like a good sign. It's a neutral sign that I haven't heard back from anybody else. It's quite normal. It's only been three days um, and today is a Saturday. But nonetheless, I cannot stop <laughs> refreshing my inbox even though it's a Saturday and I'm most certainly not going to hear back from anyone on the weekend unless the agent is crazy and I don't think any of them are that crazy. So yeah, we're just waiting. Tips, do not query all the agents that you most want in the first batch because if your query sucks, you've shot yourself in the foot right at the beginning. So I queried agents I would like to work with but not the ones that I've been like dreaming about working with. We all, we all have dream agents even though they tell you not to have them. We all have agents that for aspiring to get represented by and then agents that we like we think they have a good sales history but we don't we're not dying for them to represent us um and i sent mine out to six that i'm not dying to represent me because that way if i get six rejections and my query is the problem i didn't like throw away my chances with the agents i want most it's super miserable and depressing, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's very hard to have your child kind of like out there in the world for people to judge and having no idea what they think or getting a pass on something that you think was great. Um, but it is a necessary evil for those of us who want to traditionally publish and I knew it was going to be hard and painful before I started. Um, I just didn't know how neurotic I was going to get. So again, maybe don't pay for Query Tracker Premium if you think you're gonna be like me. Um, but that's all I've got for you for now. Some slap together basics about where to get query information and how much I'm suffering. If you want an actual worthwhile video about where to find agents and how to research them and what makes a good versus a bad agent and how to tell the signs, um, I can either make a video, but also Alexa Dunn, a traditionally published author who, if you're watching my channel, you've probably heard of, has like a whole series on this. You can go watch those as well. That's up to you. If for some reason you want me to do it, let me know in the comments down below um, I will probably do it if I get an agent because then I'll feel like I actually have a knowledge basis as opposed to someone who's just floating around in the void of suffering, um, talking to people as if I have any, any real knowledge on what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, until then, Alexa is actually traditionally published, so I'm gonna link her channel down below because you could go buy her book now and that was published by an actual publisher and I'm still suffering so yeah anyway um see you in the next video bye are you done okay 
You may be in here for a period of time, but if you're being naughty, I'm kicking you out. <laughs>